Okay, I just want to get something really clear about the aprons that I designed and how they are meant to be worn. When you talk about vintage and retro, you're talking about the 50s and the 60s. Women used a lot more corsets and things to bind them to make their figures. I mean, even if you look at current patterns, like I'm a size 22 in any pattern, but if I go to the store, I'm a size 10 or an 8, depending on the designer, and I can buy jeans in a size 6. So I just wanted to explain how to properly wear an apron that I design. I get this all the time. You look through my aprons. I will show a clip now. You're looking at my mannequin's figure. I call it a mall size, which would be a current size two, four, six, somewhere around there. Jan is like a size two. I think my big booty mannequin is a size six or seven, I want to say waistline is real small but her derriere and I I mean I got her because her ass is awesome and when you're displaying your items you want them to look nice you want them to look really cute here is an example of a dress form as you see I love this one in particular she was free on Craigslist a gentleman was getting rid of rid of his lingerie shop let's measure her waist and waist being the smallest part of her body not her stomach which is flat which most grown women 30 velvet 40 platinum if you're lucky you have this waist most of us don't her waist measures 27 inches now her derriere which is across the juiciest or plumpest part of her body measures almost 40 which means she has big ass. So my waist would be the smallest portion, but as you can see, I'm not small this way. And I have a little pouch and I don't have Miss Thing here's derriere. You measure your waist, don't tug on it, don't pull it, you know, oh I want, no, you don't do that because then you get that muffin thing, okay? You just want to measure your waist and be honest with yourself. You want your stuff to fit. So your waist is not that far from your from your bra line. And my navel's right here, and then I, my pants are kind of low today. My waist measures 33 and a half, 34. If I sit down, of course it's gonna spread because my muffin top's gonna stick out a little more. So I say 34. So that is the difference. This is the complaint I get when I take the pictures as shown. They are on either this dress form or they are on this dress form. This is the smallest portion of her waist. She is 25. This is a tutu, or what they would consider a petticoat. Tutus usually refer to something short. Petticoats usually refer to something, you know, right above the knee or longer. Um, and a lot of people, when I say petticoat, they don't understand what I mean. And I take the pictures with these petticoats that are, I, I got these just for taking pictures. And that's the plastic form. If I turn her around, she's more like me. She has that disease, it's called no acetal. So, of course, I like to use this dress form, it's more uniform, especially when I'm learning how to take my own pictures and set it up. I have Jan, who is a real um, department store model, but she's standing in a funny position. And unless I'm displaying real clothes, the aprons do not look good on her, so I try not to use her unless I'm going to um, show clothing. This is one of my personal first with my very first machine. It was like a cheap Kmart $50 machine. One layer. You can see the stitch. You can see the seam allowance. You can see the hem. This apron is about three years old. And here's an example of how not to wear your apron. So many times I see people and they tie it around their pants line. Oh yeah, this is how I'm going to wear my apron just like this with my muffin top and my love handles hanging out and it's not sexy like the picture and my derriere is not looking that fabulous and I'm ready to cook with my pocket. The aprons that I design are designed to wear 
almost right under your boobs. Not just like, look in the mirror. You'll see what I mean. And, oh, well, I have a stomach. It kind of covers it. It makes it more like a dress. And that's what the novelty is of having a very dress, cute, feminine apron is for. This looks more flattering than it did when I had it down around my waist. Even a full-figured woman has a small part in her waist. And it might be just a little bit higher because she's thicker in other places. This way, you can even see the curvature in my back, which most plus size women, they have nice asses. So why not show it off? This particular one has short straps, but most of my aprons have three yard straps. So you can, if you're my size, you can wrap it around three times. If you're super, super tiny, four times. If you're a plus size, even twice. And then tie it in a bow in the front. But that's just properly how to wear an apron. And when you see a picture on my blog, or on my Facebook, you're seeing the petticoat as a display. It's not to trick you or anything of that nature. I take pride in what I do and I really am passionate about my designs and, and how they look. And see how that poofs out? That's because of the tutu underneath. Now, what I did decide to do because so many people were asking me about the tutus, I decided you can order the apron, depending on the apron style. I don't suggest it for your modern, I call it the modern straight apron. They don't look good, but anything circle skirt will look good. And I can build it in 25 extra dollars, like I said, depending on the length and how many layers you want. Some are so full that they would actually need four layers, some need two, and we discuss that when you order. This is the apron I made for a fundraiser. Built in petticoat. The woman at the show tried it on just like this and of course infuriated me to no end and it I didn't make the ties long enough to wrap around twice because I didn't want to cover the stones the smallest part of my waist and as you can see like I said it depends on your personal derriere if you know that your butt does not look like that this apron is not gonna make your ass look like this and this one is heavier duty for for like a barbecue because it's a biker apron. I went ahead and made a $75 apron, which is less expensive without a petticoat and with the top, which is considered a full apron versus a half apron. And this one has very long, I love long ties. This is a pocket in the front. And unfortunately, the designer of this print only made it with Caucasian females. I could not find motorcycle apron with any other nationality, so this is all, I mean, I looked everywhere. This is a short, cute apron, and this is how it's worn. This is, these are the actual ties, three yards, just so you can see. What it looks like on a real person versus a mannequin. And here are the ties really long. I like really long ties. Plus if you wanted to wear it really low, I mean I guess you could, but I think it's kind of sexy when you have strings hanging down your back, you know, especially if the other tie is in the front. You know, and I, I just put the bow on, the bow comes off. It's just a ribbon bow extra. I see people put on the apron. This is how it would look. I, it's a, that's not the way my aprons were designed. This is what you would consider as my raven apron design. I wear it at the smallest part of your waist. And even without a petticoat, if you wear it properly, it will flatter you. And actually this was designed for someone with really large boobs. And someone said, well, I got the apron and there's no cleavage. Well, cleavage is not included in the apron. It's how they're wearing the apron. What do you want to eat? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay, break it down. No.